Hello everybody and welcome back to Knaveswell Farm. So things are going pretty well on here. We've got quite a lot of equipment. We've also got some uh, silage fermenting currently. Uh, so potentially we do have quite a bit of money. Uh, so yeah, we're doing pretty well. However, we're not doing too well for storage. Uh, I think really, although we have quite a lot of sheds, uh, we've filled them because we have way too much equipment. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is we are going to erect a new shed in, I think, field number six. I think in here it would probably be best. If I just open it up, open the gate up, uh, where we've got the dominator parts, where the header is flipped off, um, I think it would be best here. If we, can, if we can position it here, then that would be ideal. Um, obviously, again, because it's a placeable, it might conflict with the trees, uh, positioning it too close to the hedge. But uh, all we can do is try. So let me just start this up. And I'll try and retrieve the header if I can do. Uh, it's it's looking in a bad position there. Let's just detach the trailer. I might have to reset it. I really don't know why it flips off every single time you stop the game. Whenever you reload the game, you come back into uh, the save game and it's already flipped off the trailer. So it's weird. Uh, I don't know. It must be glitchy. So I've managed to get it attached to the combine. I'm kind of thinking that we should leave it on the combine and sell the trailer because it seems that whenever you leave it on there it just tips off which isn't really that good uh, so yeah I think I will I'll get rid of it it's gonna make it a bit harder to transport it but it's no wider than the road so we should be okay okay so we're now ready to place the shed and field number six I've established is not the field for us because the, the shed doesn't really go with the terrain it just goes flat and it sort of hovers on either side uh, with this field being quite you know it's, it's a rolling field so yeah field six is not good uh, for a shed so we need to find a totally flat piece of land which might sound easy to do but on this map it's actually very hard so um, yeah if it's not 100% flat the shed will float which is going to look incredibly strange so the hunting mission begins. The bottom of that field might be okay. Hmm, it might be. But again, it has to be totally flat. Yeah, looking at it, just here might be okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save the game. And then I'm going to try it. Obviously, if it's floating, we'll have to load the game. Uh, but I think here is looking... Okay, I think it is, uh, but we'll have to find out later on. So, it is the large shed by Interfan. The shed modelling is actually by Giants, but I think Interfan converted it into a placeable. Uh, and it costs £15,695. So not cheap, but it's not unreasonable. Sheds are expensive to, to build anyway. Uh, so, I think it was roughly here. It's a shame you can't see too well if it's hovering. You Actually, yes, you can. It is hovering. Hopefully you see what, I can, what, what I'm actually on about there. Yeah, it's not easy. That really isn't easy. We might just have to do it anyway. Looking at that. I think if I place it here, that might be the best bet. So, how did it work out? Yep, floating in this corner, and then obviously perfect in this corner because uh, it's much higher up here. So even though this field looked flat, it really isn't. So, I don't know. I think we'll search for another field. If there isn't one, we'll leave it. If there is, I'll load the game and replace it. For the hunting job, we're going to use the 7810. 7810. <laughs> I hate having to say that twice. Um, shut the door. And I think we'll look at field number 25, because that might be quite flat. And potentially some of the fields further on. But again, you see, this field here. Although it's flattish, it isn't totally flat, so we're going to have trouble there as well. Although, field number. What number is it? 
for number 23, back there, that is looking quite flat. Let's take a look. We'll see how flat it actually is. Love driving this tractor. It feels so so beefy and uh, powerful. Soon be muddy though, if we're going through the mud. Because it is washable. Yes, this field is actually pretty decent for a shed. Uh, and it doesn't matter if the weeds go in the shed because, you know, it's a shed. So maybe in this corner here, maybe just over here will be the best place. So I'm going to load it up. It means the tractor will uh, disappear, of course, back to the yard, but that's okay. It's worth a go. So here we go again. Let's just try it out. We're going to have to fly over there. I did say here. Can you see if it's floating? Again, it is. It's floating again. Really? Well, I think we'll have to live with it, to be honest. Nothing we can really do. If I put it there. Uh, we'll run over there and see what it looks like. Second thoughts, let's take the combine because it needs to go in the shed anyway. Hopefully, it is okay. If it's hovering just slightly, that's fine, I'm gonna leave it because I can't really see a solution. When the map itself isn't flat, it's just like impossible to place it flat. Like on The Sims, if you've played The Sims, um, which I'm sure you would have done, you'd have played one of them at least, um, it just sort of, it goes with the terrain, so you don't get floating objects, but in Farming Simulator, it hasn't quite been mastered yet, and uh, yeah, they tend to float, so it's a bit of an issue. But let's just hope for the best. It actually looks really good. It looks very in keeping with the countryside. Oh, sticky situation. Diff lock and four wheel drive on a two wheel drive combine. It's always helpful. But we need it. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think this is two wheel drive. Yeah, pretty sure it is. Uh, so, that has actually uh, ended up okay. It's always okay. At the other end, it's floating a bit. But we might have a, I might have a bit of a solution for that. We might be able to put a placeable hedge there. All I can do is try it. Again, it might not allow us to place it so close to the shed. Uh, some of you are probably saying, oh, forget it. It really doesn't matter. And uh, to be honest, it doesn't matter too much. It's just to make it look a bit neater. The closer we can get that is there. So if I get a more fitting, uh, like a fur, it might look a bit better. I'll put that there. Might look a bit weird, but yeah. I'll just leave it like that. Just a random piece of hedge there. It kind of disguises it. It will do. Uh, but we do now have some storage, finally. So I'm going to put this into the shed. I'm then going to get a seed drill, put a grass border around the shed, like a track, and then it will separate it from the rest of the field. And at least if the, the combine's in here, if the header tips over, it won't be hard to get it back again. We should probably put a pressure washer here as well, but we can't really afford it. Well, I suppose we could afford it, but we might be in debt again soon if we buy that. If I take the header off, that might prevent it from tipping over. So, yeah, it's not great, but it will do. Let's head over to the farm, let's get a seed drill, and let's just neaten things up a bit. So back into this tractor, the 7810. I will uh, quickly attach it to the uh, sulky direct drill, put some grass in. I suppose we could actually do the whole field while we're there. Might not be a bad idea. But we are going to have to fill it up. So, this time I use the big bags because it just seems more realistic, even if they do tip over. But, <laughs> I'm not going to bring them on the trailer. I'd love to, but it's very frustrating. 
I'll fill it up at the store. So we'll take all this up there and then bring it all back again. That way, I'll also know how much we actually need to buy. Okay, so we'll leave that there. Turn the engine off. And now we've got to go for a bit of a trek back to get the telehandler. Now the correct attachment for us should be just out here. We do have two of them. I think one is for a tractor and the other one is for our telehandler, which is the one we need. They always tip over though, weirdly. Uh, so we're going to have to tilt the attachment just to get it fitted. Is it this one? Nope. This one here. Okay, so we'll head over there and then we'll load up the seed drill. I don't think the big bag seed bags are very expensive, uh, so this really shouldn't be an issue. In fact, it probably is cheaper than filling it up from just you know the, the pallets at the farm. We'll have to see, but from what I can remember, they are cheaper. Now, where are they? These ones just here, seeds. We'll buy two to begin with, otherwise I might get it wrong. And uh, yeah, the rule is, well, my rule is, pick up one at a time, otherwise they go berserk. Although I haven't done the seed bags before, so they might not be as bad. They might be able to control themselves a bit more. Might be better if we load it from the back. Get as close to those back spring tines as possible. And then extend the boom. I think, well, that might be uh, a bit too far away. That might be, that might be good. Yep, the icon has appeared, so uh, let's hope for the best. There we go. So yeah, obviously the cover doesn't fall back on this drill, I don't think. Uh, so it's not 100% realistic, but the idea is brilliant. And yes, we're going to take quite a few of these bags by the look of it. So we'll just put them in the corner, out of the way. These bags actually are really good. They're handling really well much better than the fertilizer bags. It's probably because there's like four straps for them to go on. Whereas the other one I think is just the, the one big one in the center. Oh, don't want to miss anything. And it looks like it's gonna take probably four in total. The drill wasn't even empty, so if it was totally empty, it would be taking quite a lot. Oh, no, <laughs> we don't want to pick up the other one. Uh, so, let's buy some more. Hopefully I'm not in the way. Seeds, and again, two of those. I think you can only pick up one at a time anyway because you have to put two of the loops on the uh, two pallet forks. It's now 80% full. It's going to need one more. But is it worth putting the last one in? I'm not sure. It's 94% full, so it will only require a small amount and... Well, I think you actually you untie the bottom, don't you, with rope and you can tie it up again, so we might be able to do that.
Ah, if you press X, it looks like it's easier to detach them that way. Otherwise, it picks the other one up again. I'm still learning. Okay, last one. Let's just top it up. And when it hits 100%, there we go, let's leave it at that. So we can continue using that next time. So I'm going to put it in the dry. Let me just put it here. And now we're ready to take it back to the farm to do our grass border and then put a different crop into the field. Now this map, as far as I'm aware, isn't enabled with multi-fruit, but I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the extended version coming soon will be, but I have to uh, confirm that nearer to the date. Um, but yeah, let's go and plant that field anyway. Using a good tractor for it. Been looking forward to using a, a, this for a good job. And seed drilling seems like a good job for the tractor. So many people want me to put the dual wheels on, so I think I'm going to have to, just to make this look good. Uh, so, um, yeah, not all of this is going to be field, obviously. I think all of this entrance area will have to be grass, which is okay, because actually we drive through here anyway to get into field number 24 if we can't get the implement through the other gate, because it's quite tight going around there. To be honest, I probably should have planted grass in the shed as well, but just being dirt is okay. And I think we'll probably come out to about there. So I'll just keep doing this, like painting the floor, painting the ground. We don't want to take up too much of the field, but there's like an obvious line there that we should go to. Obviously we need enough space to get in and out of the shed without wrecking the crops. And just down here as well. Putting a nice neat edge on there. Should be a good border for the field. And obviously I've left space there as well for getting into field number 24. So there we go, that is all done. What do you think? Uh, obviously this is going to grow, I should think. The grass should grow. Uh, so it, will, uh, it won't look quite as much like it's been painted, if you know what I mean. Quite a lot of weeds in here, but again, it doesn't really matter. It will all be trampled on anyway by the machinery. Uh, so that is, in my opinion, quite a good thing to do, especially with the extra storage. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to just seed this field here with probably, well, what crops do we have? Let's just take a look here. Uh, I always miss the page. Which page? I, I've been playing FS15 for so long and I still don't know where to look for the crop types. There we go. Uh, so yeah, canola is the obvious choice, but I think we might go with wheat or barley. Let's go with barley. The only reason I haven't chosen canola is because I did the other fields as canola. So we don't want too many. Yeah, this field here, field number 20. It's quite a big field, so I think we'll stick with barley. And the good thing is you can't overlap the grass. Even if you do go over there, it won't make a mess of it. 
You might think that's unrealistic, but it is quite handy. And field 23 isn't that big, so we should get this done in no time. Almost forgot. There's the dual wheels for you. It actually looks really good with dual wheels. Some tractors look pretty stupid, but I think John Deere's are one of the best for having them on. Obviously, you don't say, oh, I'm not putting dual wheels on that tractor because it looks stupid, because that would just be ridiculous. That isn't the purpose for dual wheels anyway. It's not to make them look pretty. Um, it, it's for several reasons, isn't it? It's for uh, compaction, traction, and looks. <laughs> that, that was my uh, atrocious um, explanation for what dual wheels are for, but um, I think I'm down the right lines there, hopefully. There are some really dense, weedy areas in this field. I don't know how it decides where the weeds are going to be, and also if you left the field completely for hours, days and weeks, would the whole field be totally overgrown? Or does it have a limit? That would be quite interesting to see really, if you just leave a field and see what happens. I'm sure someone will have done it, so if you have done it, I would love to know. There must be a limit, surely. Otherwise you could just sort of turn up at a field and say, look at this, I have grown a field of weeds. Yeah, I think that shed really does fit in well. It's amazing how you can develop an area with a seed drill and a placeable shed. I've never really thought of doing that before, but in future, whenever we're short of space, I'm definitely going to just place a shed because it's so handy. Okay, so that is pretty much the whole field done. It's not the easiest field to do because the texture is exactly the same. I think there might be a few little bits here and there which have been missed. Let's just take a look on the map here. A few dots, but nothing considerable. Uh, so it, look, it should look pretty decent when it's grown. Looking forward to it. This is all going to be part of our massive harvest, which will be near the end of the series. Uh, most likely in August, I'd have thought. But we'll have to see. It might be the end of July. Uh, so let's stop that there, fold it up, and actually we might as well put it in this shed here, but of course we're going to have to remove the dual wheels because I don't think that's going to go through there. So yeah, let's just remove each one individually, if only it was this easy in real life. But certainly, it's a nice tractor, very nice, and the sound effects aren't too bad either. Let's put it in here. one thing I'd do differently in future, it would be to plant the grass in here as well. But it's not necessary as such, it, it just makes it look a bit better. Right, don't want to smash that door off. Right, so yeah, that does give you a good idea of how much space there is in here. I thought that was further back. Hmm. Well, I'm sure we'll need it again soon anyway. Uh, so that is it from us on Nasewell Farm today. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Um, and we have actually progressed quite well. So until tomorrow, thanks again and see you again soon. Bye for now.